What's up, folks? This is uh, Sled Driver One here again. Uh, if you've seen my one video on unhooking the sled from the truck and getting ready for transport to track, you may already have seen some of this stuff. But today, I'm gonna make try to make a short video here of what all the controls in the cab of this sled does. Now, this is the Red General Tire Decision Maker sled. Uh, this is a New Holland Genesis Series tractor cab uh, we've taken most of the oem controls and stuff out to make our own just for simplicity and stuff you can find at napa stores and somewhere where you're on the road uh sled sitting here not running so we'll go through the whole thing here uh down underneath there you can see there's the master switch it's tucked up underneath the side console here Turn that on, everything comes to life. Press the button, fire up the Deutz, and you can see on the dash here a transmission temperature gauge that is not hooked up to the Allison automatic transmission that actually drives the sled around and powers the box back. Uh, oil pressure for the engine, that's obviously pretty important. Uh, that air pressure gauge there is for the air tank supply in the whole system and the voltmeter which is pretty important to tell you if your alternator is getting ready to die just like a car or anything else and there's a second air pressure gauge here that you can see has no air on it whatsoever right now that is a supply pressure gauge for the air clutch that drives the box which is controlled by this right here so just a air control valve down in the console there and yes that is a cable with a cable clamp hooked to it that is a safety kick out that the box pulls when it gets to the front and it's hooked to a spring that's hooked to the other end of the cable. So in case the electric over air solenoids fail to kick the box out, that's like a safety backup fail safe deal to pull out the control valve in the cab to hopefully get the clutch disengaged when the box gets to the front of the sled. So we pop that in like we're gonna make a run and there's our clutch supply pressure gauge. And also runs the pretty purple light over there in the corner. Um, all the, I call immediate lights here on the dash. Uh, one all the way over here labeled fan. Now this is a Deutz air-cooled diesel engine. There is no radiator, there is no antifreeze, coolant or anything. But there are two fan belts that run a cooling fan to blow air around the jugs and the cylinders of the engine and those belts run on a spring-loaded over center type uh, belt tensioner that if the belts were to break the tensioner rolls over hits a switch and that red light comes on if that red light comes on you need to shut her down pretty quick so you don't to toast the doids uh, air that's just a low air light it's like a semi hydraulic anything you hit for the wheels or the lift, pan lift, anything like that. Uh, so you don't go down the track with something of that turned on. Not that it matters the way our closed system hydraulic system works or closed center hydraulic system works, excuse me. Belt, that is our box belt. And all that does is this controller right here. It's a PTO uh, flipper controller from a semi. It's in right now it all the way over that disengages that and the belt light goes off rear that is for the other controller over here now we got our idiot light for that that engages the back rear end of the tandems to actually drive the sled around drive up on the track back back to the starting line whatever needs to be done um, again other than the Deutz who have an Allison automatic transmission that is in the center of the sled back here and the engine and transmission are not bolted directly together there's a big belt that goes from one to the other and one day I'll make a video more so of some of the driveline components and stuff of this thing but uh, in order to make a run that needs to be out you don't need to have any red lights on there to make a run down the track the drive rear end is out the box belt is out and the only other thing over here 
this is our box drive differential controller and it's in right now and that's only for pulling we flip that out to go down the road and you'll see the yellow light on the left there went off flip it back in that's to tell you you're good to pull now these rear ends that lock in and out of gear are simply old two-speed differentials uh, we take the shifter and there's a uh, bolt or a piece of machine steel either way you want to do it through the housing it is spring loaded to neutral and you supply air to it to lock it in gear to make it do something otherwise the wheels will turn but the pinion won't turn so and then the rest of our yellow lights over here you see the one on the left there that's box drive that's that controller right there Just flip it one time for in to pull and one time out to get ready to go down the road uh, the middle light there, you'll see pan is not on. Uh, pan is sitting on the ground right now. Come over here to our toggle switches, and I got a dirty dash from where my dirty hands dry out all the time. Pan lift, I flip that away from us. And now we got three pretty little yellow lights. That means the pan is all the way up, and you're ready to make a run. As the box, if we go down the track, I got a. I can show you with this other switch over here. The, the three yellow lights and the purple light. The pan's up, the push down's reset, the clutch is in gear, and you're ready to ride. I'll pop the clutch out of gear before I do something stupid in here. But uh, that's pan lift, flip it away, lifts the pan up. It's a double throw switch, but if you flip it back to you, that's another function up there that you have to get out and op manually open a ball valve to change the oil pressure in the accumulator up front for the push down i'll try to show you some of that in a few minutes uh, the wheel switch is obviously for the steering wheels up front there on the pan uh, push away from you they go down pull it back to you they flip back in uh, red and green light switch and a lot of times if you've seen any of my in cab videos we'll be riding down the track uh, because of that safety kick out cable I'll actually ride with a couple fingers or my whole hand or something actually holding a little pressure forward on this thing. Uh, if you take a big bad bounce or a goofy ride off the starting line, if the sled chassis twists or the cab moves a little bit on its mounts, uh, I've only ever had it happen one time that that cable will get enough tension on it to pull down in there and actually pop out of gear. And when that comes out of gear, you've got a freewheeling weight box and you don't want that. So I may have my hand like that or a couple fingers and I may just take my pinky finger and flip the green light on. Uh, that's just a habit, I guess you would call it. And then this extra panel over here is what some people may refer to to the old blankety blank panel. Uh, kill, obviously. Just a push button, that's our kill switch up front. Uh, box brake is up right now it's up for normal operation if you're having a problem you don't need to fumble trying to pull something up you just reach over and slap it down and you lock the box brakes hold it still in the rails you don't want to run away box when something goes wrong and then these two switches here pan drop now this one on the left will simply just put the pan into float there you can see the middle light went off. That means the pan, just gravity's taken over on the pan. Whatever weight is over the frame rails or something will make it, if there are weight boxes up there at all, will let the pan go into float and sit down on the ground. Now, the other switch right beside it there, and it will work even if that one's off, this was one that I added on my own, well, I added it myself because it wasn't in here before, and I got the idea from, I wasn't the first person to have this idea. I've seen other sleds with it. This is a push down switch. Now, this activates the down pressure push down system on the back of the pan. And that's the system with the hydraulic accumulator up front when the box tops. It actually puts pressure on the back of the pan to the bottom of the frame rails. And a lot of times when you see a stop, you'll see the back of the sled up in the air and all the tires are hanging there spinning. Now, we hit that you'll see we've raised the front of the pan off the ground uh, probably six or eight inches and now both yellow lights are off. 
Now that right there is for emergencies, either on my end or the puller's end. Uh, obviously that'll shove the grouser bars on the back of the pan in the ground, but it'll also raise the front of that pan up. Like if something were to happen on the sled, if there was a failure and the weight box never moved out from under the cab, obviously there's not a whole lot of weight up front on the sled for just a regular float to make the bars dig in and do much stopping. You hit both of those switches, they're right there close together. As long as you hit the one in the back, that's the important one for the down pressure. And not only will it shove those grouser bars in the back, but since all the weight of the sled's back here in the back naturally anyway, it will pick the front of that pan up. It'll straighten your chain out, hook to the vehicle. And when your chain angle goes from 20 or 30 degrees pulling down on the back of your vehicle to almost straight out if it's a tractor or two-wheel drive truck or something the front end's going to sit on the ground the tires will break loose spinning the rpms will go through the roof and the guy driving if we don't come to a dead stop even the, he will let off the throttle and turn around and look at me like what are you doing you idiot but obviously when they tell the weight box never moved they usually don't they come back here and want to thank us for not having a runaway situation so uh, that's something extra that's been added as a safety feature i also use it if a vehicle is let's just say a tractor or somebody's headed out of bounds and they've got the wheels turned and i can just foresee this is about to be a jackknife bad ride uh you can stand on the brakes for the wheel brakes all you want to there and all it usually does is lock the tires up and slide. But that push down, shoving those bars in the ground, even if the box is halfway up, uh, that'll do a whole lot better job of stopping and anchoring things to the ground, keep from tail whipping the sled around into the wall, possibly. Uh, that's there not only for emergencies on our end, but for the pullers as well. Pop the clutch out again, I left that in. Uh, over here on this column, I can see my backup camera. That's just for convenience. It's tucked inside the back bumper so we can back up to the chalk line to start at more or less the same place every time on the track. Uh, yellow button, it's dirty. Uh, it's a parking brake button just like a semi. It's in right now. Brakes are released. Pop it out. Brakes are on. Um, flaps. These are backwards for a reason, so they're each one goes a different way for the different side. Now those are for the mud flaps up front. I hit the switch, come in and out. Uh, well, if I flip the switch the right way. Those are just to fold those in more or less to go up and down the road, fold them in for narrow things up for transport. Uh, sometimes you might see us on a narrow track or something, we may flip them in on one side to let the roller go by or something closer. Uh, nothing real important to that. If you watch the first video for unhooking, there's a switch for the cables, and that is the axle cable rack down in there. They are all the way back right now. Their tension is off for transport. Flip the switch the right way. There you see it. Pulling the rack forward, pull those cables tight. And that's for the airbags being deflated for pulling. That holds the axles up tight to the frame rails to lift everything up when the box tops and the push down goes off. So, and right above that, whoa, way too close. Uh, air ride is down right now for pulling. And unless we just have an absolute mud hole of a track and we're lacking traction or something, we don't ever pump those up on the track. That's only for going down the road. Marker light, uh, that's turning all the chicken lights on for pulling when you're separated from the truck. Uh, over here's another toggle switch for the load lights. That's just the, like regular tractor lights on the front of the cab. There you can see my radio up in the cab there. That's for talking back and forth to track officials. Just makes things a little more convenient when you might need to have a sled reset or something. There's the Agritronics box for onboard measuring. The Jeep, I only have a GPS on this sled. I do not have the gear tooth to count off the wheels because most of the time with bigger stuff, even with four weights in the box, we stop and all eight tires are up in the air spinning. So we may come to a dead stop and it still be counting. So I don't have that. I've just got the GPS and then it 
uh, PPL events, NTPA events, whatever it may be. Uh, obviously, we use the laser for a little more accuracy. Uh, there is an ignition switch here. I just leave it on all the time because of the master switch. And the loud pedal over here to call on the Deutz to get with it. And I'll do a little bit of a simulation here to what some of this stuff does. Uh, this right here is hooked to a shift. This is a shifter, shifter hooked to a regular old shift throttle cable run down to the house and automatic transmission. Nothing is in gear, so I can pull it in gear. You can hear the motor jump a little bit, but nothing's in gear. Nothing happens. Uh, flip in the box belt there, and all that is is an air cylinder on a tensioner pulley that tightens a belt from the bottom drive line off the transmission and rear end to the upper drive line that drives the box. Now that's in. Now our box is moving. We'll go ahead and run it all the way back under the cab here. And uh, this is drive rear end. We'll put that in gear. Put our wheels down. I'm parked on a hill here so it'll roll a little bit. And obviously now we're moving. Uh, that's all those do. And in order for simulation purposes only here, I'm going to show you what it kind of looks like in here when you make a run down the track. I'm going to unlock our front rear end just because I'm sitting here and not doing anything. That'll allow the drive shaft to spin. Now, uh, clutch in. We've got our purple light. Obviously, we're not going to get three yellow lights right here because I disengaged the box drive front axle. I'll uh, turn the green light on and we'll take off down the track. Well, as soon as dummy here puts the belt in. Now, we'll go down the track. The box is running up. My trip switches are all slid all the way forward right now. So it takes it a second to get up there. See the light go off, the pan's on float. And now we popped out of gear. The box is all the way at the front. The push down went off picks up the back end of the sled. Uh, the light is still on because I still got the green light on. Turn the green light off the way all the switches are up front and that goes off. Now, clutch pulls itself out of gear on the kick out cable. And if it was a normal run, I'd sometimes in the videos people ask, what's he doing with his hand? The box may top out and we're still sliding to a stop. Well, the actual box drive line is all stopped turning at that point because the box is at the front. Nothing else is turning back here behind the clutch and all that stuff. So I'll reach over and flip that in as we're sliding to a stop. Now all that does is put air to that air cylinder to tighten that belt up. Nothing will do anything until I reach over here and grab this and jerk it back. That puts the Allison back in gear. We'll run the box back to hit the pan reset switch. This is a little bit of hand and eye coordination here. Hands up, push downs reset. Box is all the way back. And we use the wheel switch there. A lot of times we pull with them flipped all the way up. And belt is out, drive rear is in. Now we're ready to put it in reverse and back back to the starting line. That, other than, there's my air conditioner controls and the fan switch, uh, the windshield wiper controls from the factory cab. There's no windshield wipers on here because, let's face it, who wants to pull in the mud and the rain? Uh, the all-important air conditioner power switch. You don't need to have no trouble with that on a hot day. That should get really grumpy sled operators. Uh, flasher switch, that was originally hooked up to change the flash pattern on the lights. I've changed the lights on this sled that's not hooked up anymore. Uh, anybody that knows anything about these things here, it says ready. Uh, you get ready to make a pull. You press it one time, it says stage. You make a run. And you can, I won't go through all this stuff. But that's a whole nother can of worms to go through that thing. But one other thing I do want to show 
everybody. Roll the box back out here like we're gonna shut her down. I try not to ever cut the box off under the cab because if it's sitting over top of the engine, the fuel tank and all that stuff and it's not running, it's just there. It's obviously an automatic. It's not like you can pull start it. If the starter goes out, you really don't want the box sitting there. Uh, and this has a mechanical fuel shut off cable under here. I'll shut the engine off. But I'm gonna leave the power on. Uh, one thing I do wanna show everybody, take everything out of gear and put that in and that back in, just like we're gonna make a pull. Turn the green light on. People say all the time, well, what, he's, he cheated me, he put on brakes, or he dropped a pan early or something. Well, check this out. Clutch has to be in gear for the green light to be flashing. Now, if anybody wants to think that boxes run at different speeds, I'm simply reach in here, pop that out of gear. I'm not touching that switch. It's still on green light. But because that clutch is disengaged and there's no air on that, voila, no green light. Now, we'll pop it back in gear. And we got a green light. Now I'm gonna open the other door here and show you what that light's for if my legs are long enough to do all this. Uh, I'm actually gonna, well, maybe. Maybe not. Okay, if you can see, well, I don't know if you can see or not. The green light is over there still flashing. I put my foot on the brake pedal. Well, maybe. We're gonna get a red light. Not only did we get a red light, the green light is not flashing anymore. As soon as I take my foot off the brake, green light's back on, red light is off. Same thing will happen. I remember the green light is flashing. If I reach over here and hit Let's just use the pan float switch for an example. Same way, red light, no green light. Now that one switch is all I'm touching here. Turn that back off, red light's off, green light's flashing. That is, no sled operator is going to cheat a vehicle or anybody special because if all of our stuff's working right according to the rules and regulations that we have to follow anything that we do in that cab that would change the outcome of a pull pan drop wheel brakes even the box brakes will not only will they turn that green light off they'll throw that red light on and this particular these tile sleds here level eight sleds most of them are set up this way Everybody says about changing gears. Well, that's a Profab five-speed transmission. Those are the shift rods sticking out the front of it there. And I'm outside of the cab. That's the only way you can get to it. There's no way to change the speed of the box from within the cab. There's no way to change where the pan drops at because there's the pan drop switch. Right there on that little slide rail. The box catches on its way up. The bar up there with the rollers on it, that's what the box hits to trip the clutch out of gear and the push down on. And the only other thing that we change as far as sled operator, here's one of the box stops. You can see it's got two big pegs there on that rubber block. It sets back here in the frame rail in one of those, there's actually five holes, but it's four different positions that you can put those on each side. So there's no way to change how fast the box goes up or where the box tops or where the pan drops without actually getting out of the cab and making changes. There's nothing that you can do in that seat right there. And yeah, I know I need a new seat cushion. Bottoms of my jeans have wore that off from too many braced up rides on the dash. There's nothing to do right here in this seat to change the outcome of a pull 
that anybody standing on the sidelines with a video camera can't prove. So, I don't care who wins. Whoever can get up and go the fastest and drag me the furthest is going to be who wins. So, that's about all I've got for today. I actually talked and done this a little bit longer than I wanted to. But, hopefully people will start getting a little better understanding of these things. I try to be an open book. If anybody has questions about stuff, come ask. I'll be glad to show you how anything works. Thanks for watching, and I'll have to think up what the next video will be about. We'll open the side panels and look at the engine and some of that stuff one of these days and some more stuff up between the rails there. Thanks for watching. See you later.